Hello everyone and happy 2021. A common theme on this channel has been minimalist missions, setting a particular objective and then trying to do it with the lowest launch mass possible. In this mission, I'm gonna be minimizing part count instead of mass. I have done something like this before. Last year I did a 10 part grand tour. I'm gonna reduce down that mission here and we're just gonna to aim to make it from the surface of Kerbin to the surface of Eve. Reducing the mission is going to let me get the part count well below 10. Right away, I can get rid of the five parts that I used for mining. We're going to do this on one tank of fuel. I also had four actual rocket parts in that Grand Tour mission, counting the engines and the fuel tank. I'm going to reduce that down to just one by using the twin bore engine, which has the fuel tank in the same part as the engine. Other than the twin bore engine, the only part I'm going to need is the crew module so I can bring Bill along for the ride. I've given the rocket a bit of a wobble before launch, which will make it easier to drop it into the right angle for the gravity turn. The twin bore engine has far more thrust than I need, so I'm going to be throttling back throughout the ascent to orbit. This will slow down the ascent, which will make me lose a little bit more delta V due to gravity. However, Kerbin's not a vacuum, so the higher speeds I reach at low altitude, the more delta V I'm going to be losing due to air drag. So finding some happy middle ground will be the way to maximize this approach and reach orbit with as much delta V as possible. After completing what I had determined to be an efficient ascent profile, I reached orbit with 1,044 meters per second of delta V remaining. I'm confident more is possible. This craft is really simple to put together. It's just two parts. So give it a try yourself. See if you can reach orbit with more than 1,044 meters per second and maybe we can crowdsource the best way to do this ascent profile. If you give this a shot, be sure to drop me a comment and let me know how you did. I mentioned earlier that the part count limitation leaves us with pretty good margins on this mission. However, 1,044 meters per second to get to EVE is still not that much, and it's not enough if you just use a normal transfer burn from Kerbin to EVE. However, with a little bit of an extra push from two gravity assists off of the moon, we'll be able to get there with plenty of delta V remaining. One nice side effect of using the twin bore here is that the TWR I have here for orbital maneuvers is enormous. This usually isn't that critical and it doesn't save that much delta V, but it does make it really easy and convenient to do these precise maneuvers. For most purposes, usually one gravity assist off of the moon is enough, it would have been in this case, but we only have one transfer to worry about here. So we're going to go overkill and scrape off a little bit more Delta V by doing two assists. We've now reached EVE and we're going to capture in its orbit through a combination of arrow braking and retro burning. We probably could have shed a little bit more Delta V here with the arrow braking, but there is a limit to this. If we put the periapsis too low on EVE, we are going to overheat and begin unplanned disassembly. We have now captured in orbit of EVE, which might make it seem like the hard work is over, but this brings us to one of the trickiest parts. It's now time to look at how we are going to land this thing. We just talked about heat. This two-part craft you were looking at is incapable of landing on EVE. I experimented around with trying to save enough Delta V to retro burn to slow us on the way down to EVE, but unfortunately, the mass of the twin bore kept it going far too fast and as soon as that engine burned off, it would have kept the crew module going fast enough that the crew module would have burned off as well. That means that we have to get rid of the engine and we have to do it before the final deorbiting approach. Adding a decoupler would have added a third part. So I've planned on doing a slightly more dramatic staging maneuver. Really quite generous of Eve to have captured this asteroid just for the sake of our litho staging. From here, we're going to fast forward through many arrow braking passes down to a low EVE orbit until we reach the final landing approach. 
In testing, I had determined that the final landing approach was sensitive to the geometry of the last orbit before the landing. In some of the tests, an excessively elliptical orbit resulted in the crew module overheating on the descent to EVE. The plan was to get out and push to prevent this if necessary. Fortunately, this turned out to not be necessary. Our final orbit was well within the safe limit. After all of this concern about overheating, I realized I hadn't thought about where I was landing, Bill, and I definitely did not want to land him in a giant pool of explodium. I definitely knew that Bill would be able to glide over to one of the islands here, but I figured that we might have just enough glide ratio to make it to the mainland. As that prediction is tested, Let's talk a little bit about where the minimalist challenges are going next. The new Kerbal EVA inventory system opens up a lot of new opportunities with minimalist challenges. So there's a good chance here to do a redo of an old low mass challenge that I did, or do something new. Or I'm not against doing something else with low part count as well. I'm looking for ideas, so if you've got a good one, drop it in the comments and it might become reality. Bill has now glided over to the mainland. There's a small tidal pool or, or something, something with liquid in it, and we're going to land Bill in that. And with that, we have gotten Bill from the surface of Kerbin to the surface of Eve with only a two-part craft. I firmly believe we have scored high points in the totally useless missions category, but hopefully we've scored high points in interesting missions as well. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've seen. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.